as we leave the brachial plexus and the region of the spinal cord associated with the brachial plexus, the cervical enlargement, things become a little bit more simple. The nerves don't interweave with one another, so when we start over here with uh, T2, you can see that T2 is now forming a plexus with either T1 or with T3, and it just simply forms a, a spinal nerve which goes along underneath the rib. So let's look a little bit closer down over here. You can see that we have ventral roots right over here, ventral rootlets forming the ventral root, and then right over here we have the dorsal root, and the ventral root and the dorsal root are going to fuse to form the spinal nerve as it exits through the intervertebral foramen. Now notice that there is a color added right over here to the dorsal root and you might also notice that the dorsal root is a little bit larger here than the ventral root. The reason for this coloring and this enlargement is that this is the dorsal root ganglion right here. And so uh, the dorsal root ganglion is a characteristic of all the dorsal roots as we go up and down the length of the spinal cord. Right over here there is a structure that is blue and it is somewhat triangular and if we look over here we can see it's numbered zoom in a little bit and you can see it's numbered what this represents pia mater which is coming off the surface the lateral uh, the lateral surface of the spinal cord and the pia mater is then fusing with the arachnoid and the dura mater which is surrounding the uh, spinal cord. This connective tissue attachment of the spinal cord to the surrounding connective tissue is referred to as a ligament and because of the shape is referred to as the denticulate ligament because of the sh it reminded the anatomist of the shape of a tooth. The denticulate ligaments that we're going to find along the length of the spinal cord are going to help stabilize the spinal cord within the vertebral canal laterally.